Hello, I'm Terry Thompson, and this is my unbreakable story. You know, I grew up in a military family, and I spent my entire childhood all the way up until I was about 15 years old traveling around the world with my mother and my father because my father was in the military. And everywhere that we went, I was always the new guy. And being the new guy really kind of has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. You know, the advantage of that is, is that, well, nobody really ever knew who I was. Disadvantage of that is, well, nobody really knew who I was. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there with being the new guy everywhere that I went. I always had, you know, to kind of step into a new situation, being that, that new guy, not really knowing what to expect. Who are the people? What are the teachers going to be like? Who will be my new friends? I never really knew. It was always new. It was always new. It was a new environment, a new opportunity, new cultures, new ways of doing things. And although I experienced that throughout, you know, at least the first 15 years of my life when I was traveling around with my mother and my father, it, it wasn't easy. Yeah, you know, I had some hardships. I was like, man, yeah, you know, I had those moments where I had to really struggle past a lot of different things. I had to struggle past having the courage and the confidence to meet new friends, to make new friends. I had to build resilient skills. I had to build a strong mindset because even though traveling around the world was exciting and it was fun. It was never fun to say goodbye to all of the friends that I had made. And just as much fun as it is to say hello, it was really bad to always say goodbye. You know, and there's a lot of friendships that I made over the years that you know, I was really sad to see some of them go. But once again, it built up that mental toughness. It built up that ability to adapt. It built up that ability to fit in no matter where it was that I was at. Now, progressing forward up until I was about 15, that, that was really about the last time that I'd really moved around from the military. Fast forward a few years, I graduated high school, and then I went into college. But before I went into college, let me kind of backstep up into my childhood. My childhood, I, I was actually quite the athlete. So being able to travel around, I was, I was able to learn sports and I was able to be a pretty good baseball player. So baseball and basketball was kind of my sports of choice when I was growing up. And I was actually a really good baseball player. You know, I, I, I started varsity as an eighth grader, did pretty well throughout my entire high school uh, you know, season, so to speak. And I even got selected to play on an all-star team to play against U Team USA before they went to the Olympics. It was absolutely an amazing experience. Right after that, I went on to go play college baseball and basketball. First year, yeah, I did pretty well in, in basketball. We went to the national tournament that year. Baseball, I was still trying to kind of find my groove within, you know, the college level of playing baseball. And although I did pretty well, it wasn't my greatest season. My, my second year of college was my greatest season. Yeah, I ended up doing really well, beating the number one ranked team, the number five ranked team, and the number seven ranked team in the nation. See, I was a pitcher. And being a pitcher, you know, I was able to, you know, control the game. I was able to control the flow. I was able to take charge and control that element. And I made it all the way through to college and even played a little bit of semi-pro baseball. Now, during that year, I had a career-ending injury that stopped me completely dead in my tracks on my dream to becoming a professional baseball player and on hopefully making it to the majors. And it was that career ending injury that just completely changed my life because all the way up to that point, yeah, you know, I was always the new guy. I was always traveling. I was always working really hard to build the knowledge, the skills, the abilities that I had throughout that time. Baseball was all that I really knew. 
you know, besides all of my friends, baseball was really the only thing that I really knew. I didn't have anything else to really fall back on. And when that career ending injury happened, I fell into a deep depression. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know where else to turn. Everything that I'd worked for was just gone in an instant. It was gone in a flash. And the only thing that I knew what, how to, what to do was to go back home. So I went back home with my family because I thought that that was the right thing to do. And I'd spent a couple of years really kind of doing much of nothing. I, was, I took a few odd jobs, worked for the family business, and I just fell deeper and deeper into a depression. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. I, don't, I, I really don't have any knowledge or skills. Baseball was all that I knew. And I was struggling. I, I really, would, you know, I had high pressure, high stress, high anxiety. I was really at a roadblock within my life. I had really hit a brick wall and didn't know where else to turn. And at that moment in time, my stepfather, my mother's third husband at the time, was dying of cancer. And I didn't want to be around that. I didn't want to be a part of that. He, he really kind of pushed a lot of people away as well, too. But that just put me further and deeper into a depression. I was like, man, you know, I'm struggling here. I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to turn to. So I went out to go stay with my real dad. During that time, just before that time, my, my stepfather passed away because of cancer. And then I, I, yeah, I spent a few months just kind of working odd jobs, didn't really know what to do. And I was like, man, I was like, I'm going nowhere. I'm doing nothing with my life. I don't have any knowledge. I don't have any skills. You know, I'm resilient. I'm mentally tough. But I really just didn't work on building any life skills. And I made a choice to kind of fall back to the only thing that I knew, which was the military. Having conversation with my dad, I decided to join the military. And he told me that that was the best decision that I ever made within my life. So I joined the military because that's all that I knew. Flash forward, I served in the military for 24 years. And during that 24 years, I was able to build knowledge. I was able to build skills. I was able to develop leadership skills, communication skills. I was able to build some technical skills during my service within the military. Now, I won't go through my entire military career. That was 24 years, but I had several deployments. I was able to lead thousands of soldiers during that time to personal professional success. And I'm truly blessed and truly thankful for that. I'm still in contact with a lot of the soldiers that I led during the course of that 24 years. And I'm truly thankful, truly blessed to see them progress within their career and glad that I had a little part in that. And when I got ready to retire from the military, I, I really, once again, I hit another brick wall. I, I wasn't progressing. I wasn't moving forward within rank. I had hit almost the highest rank that I could possibly achieve. And I just couldn't make it that one step higher. I had some physical limitations that that was really getting in my way. You know, I had some mental mental issues. I had some physical issues, combat related, non-combat related. I had some different things that was really messing with me that ultimately led to me being now 100 percent disabled. And when I got ready to retire, I was sitting here looking at like, man, you know, I've got all this knowledge. I got all these skills. I got this leadership ability, communication ability. What is next? Because once again, baseball was all that I knew when I was younger and a little bit of the military. And then I served in the military for 24 years and the military was all that I knew. So now here I am only really knowing two things within my life. Now I had, when I was getting ready to retire, I had submitted gosh, over a hundred resumes and every single one of them come back as nothing, zero, nothing. You're not what we're looking for. You're underqualified. You're overqualified. All these different roadblocks, once again, causing me to be kind of depressed, causing me to rethink things. It's like, man, am I good enough? Do I really have the knowledge and skills? 
do I really have the ability to go out there into the civilian workforce and make a difference? After having all those no's, all those rejections, all those, you know, no callbacks, I finally just said, you know what? I'm going to put the number one skill in use, and that's leadership. And I took charge of my own destiny. I took charge of my own actions. I was able to take charge, and I was able to go and have a conversation with someone present myself, present the knowledge and skills, and I was able to get an interview and ultimately able to get that job. And it's because I believed in myself to take that action. Now, here's what that taught me. What that taught me is, is that I must believe in myself. I must believe in myself and then take appropriate action because there will be people out in the world that will doubt you. There will be people out into the world that will not give you a chance, but you must believe in yourself. Here's the thing. A lot of people will judge you from a place of weakness because they do not understand your strength. And your strength is your ability to take ownership in the things that you can control, your actions, your appropriate actions. You can control that. And I had to learn that the hard way. I really did. And now, moving forward, I'm a published author. I've written several books on leadership and life and you know, mental resiliency and how to have a great day and morning routines and habits. I've been able to create online businesses. I have over 20 online businesses where I'm coaching, teaching, training, and mentoring authors and entrepreneurs how to write books how to sell books, how to build a business. I'm also networking with a lot of great people. I'm also making new friends. So you see, having said that, I know where I'm going because I know where I've been. And I don't want to go back to that place. Even though looking back, you know, I had a great life. I really had a great life. Even though there was some struggles, there was some hardships, there was some adversity, I was able to learn from those things and discover a better way forward by taking ownership, taking charge, leading myself first so that I could lead others. And now I'm leading others to their version of personal and professional success through my books, through my online training, my courses my programs, my coaching. And now I'm living the life of my dreams. You know, I have a great job, great family. I have the ability to write books. I have the ability to reach out and coach, teach, and train, and mentor uh, people out worldwide, network with people, and be a part of some great circles. So you see, it doesn't really matter where you've been. Where you've been is just a stepping stone to where you're going. You know, it's been said, if you want to be great, you surround yourself by even greater people. And I'm truly blessed to have been surrounded by some absolutely great, greater people in my life that has helped me get to where I am today. And that's it. That's my story. That's my unbreakable story. And, and I'm still making that story happen. I'm still writing that story every single day, still taking action. Still building that number one thing, which is my mindset that allows me to lead myself so that I can lead others. And that's my story. That's my unbreakable story. You know, because if it's possible for me, it's possible for you. I'm wishing you all the best and continued success and hope that you will share your unbreakable story. My name is Terry and thank you for listening.